use different resources. Right now, to cast spell in our games, it's only possible to consume action points and they are only modifying the health point of the target unit. But today we're gonna change that a little bit. We're gonna make that it's possible to use a health point or a movement point to cast a spell. And also the spells are going to be able to modify uh, both the action points or the movement point of the target unit. That way it will be possible, for example, to have a spell that boosts uh, the unit's movement point for one turn or maybe another spell that consumes its owner's health point to heal another unit. So let's get to it. So in Unreal, the first thing I'm going to do is add all the variables we need to modify the action point and movement point in all of our spells. So I'm going to go in my spells in utilities and open multiple structures. The first one is going to be a spell attack requirement. So what it is costing to cast the spell. And then we also have the spell attack impact. So what statistics we are modifying on the unit that receives the spell. And finally, the impact to real. So spell attack impact to real right here. And we're gonna start with the requirement structure. So right here, I'm gonna add myself a new variable for the cost HP. So if we want to consume HP when we cast a spell, and I'm going to move it first because I think it makes a little bit more sense with the rest of the game. And then I'm gonna add myself a second variable right here, which is going to be the cost MP, and I'm going to make it second. So I have the cost HP, the cost MP, and then the cost AP. Here we go. So that's done with this first structure, and we're gonna go to the next one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna create myself a new variable for the movement point. This so we were modifying the health point and now we are also modifying the movement point when we receive the spell and the second variable for the action point. So now it's possible to modify the HP, movement point and action point. Perfect. Now we can save and go to the last one. And here we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add ourselves a new variable to modify the movement point and finally a second variable to modify the action point. So now it's modifying health point, movement point, action point like the other ones. Perfect. Now we can save and close all three structures and open the data both spell data to assign some numbers to our spells. So here I didn't change much. I changed in the dark wave. I made that the dark wave costs 2 HP to be casted. So the priest is going to do uh, 2 damage to himself when he try to cast that spell. Then I have this slime ball, which is a little bit of a sticky attack, we can say. So uh, what I did is just that it's modifying the movement point of the target from minus one to minus two. So the target is going to have his movement point reduced a little bit. And then we have the run the chicken run, which I just made that it boosts the movement point of the current unit. So the chicken that is going to cast a spell, it's going to uh, have a min max modifier movement point, the plus four to plus six. That way the chicken is going to be able to run faster and further. Then we have the wind gust and since I didn't have any spell that consumed the movement point to be casted right here, I just added one movement point to be able to test it. And also this spell is going to uh, reduce the action point of the target by minus one. So that way uh, we can test all the possible scenarios. Perfect. Now we can save and close the data table. And now we're ready to go modify those variables inside the unit. But first, uh, before going there, I'm just gonna go modify a little something in the combat system before I forget. So let's go, let's go in the combat system and I'm going to go in my spells, in my cast spell function. And I'm gonna zoom right here when we are building the spell impact real. Here we were calculating uh, the real modifier HP right here that we want to apply to the unit uh, based on the HP min max that we set in the spell. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for the movement point and action point otherwise it will not work it will not feed any values to the unit uh, so if we want to be able to use those values well we have to feed them inside the impact wheel here we go so that's it that should be everything we needed to modify in the combat system so we can just close it and now we can go in the unit for real so let's go in the unit and open bp unit and we're going to start with the can cast spell function because now the spells cost different resources and we have to make sure that the unit has all the required resources to be able to cast the spell. So we're going to go right here at the end where we are checking if we have enough action point to cast a spell. Now we're just going to also check if we have enough health point and movement point to do it. So let's dis disconnect this for now. So I'm going to disconnect it and then we're going to reconnect uh, all the other ones. So I'm going to connect the HP first. We want to make sure that we have more than enough HP to cast the spell. So if the HP co uh, current is greater than the cost HP, we are going to be able to cast the spell. We don't want to be able to cast the spell if we have like just the right amount of HP because we don't want the units to die when it casts a spell. It will be a little bit weird. So uh, that's why we are just doing a greater than uh, right here. And then for the movement point current, we're going to do the same thing we did for the action point. So if we have more or equal than the required amount of movement point, we can cast a spell. And then what we're going to do is just uh, do an end for all these three conditions. So if we have enough action point, 
and if we have enough movement point and if we have enough action point we can cast the spell so here we go now we know if the unit can cast the spell or not and now that we know that the unit has enough stats to cast the spell, it's time to consume them. So I'm going to go in the unit cast spell function to consume those points when we cast the spell. So at the end of the function right here, we were reducing the amount of action point of the unit based on the cost of the spell. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the movement point and health point. So let's disconnect this and reconnect, uh, let's say, the movement point first. So let's reduce the, the amount of movement point of the unit based on the cost of movement point. And then we're going to do the same thing for the health point. So now we are reducing point, movement point, and action point when the unit casts a spell. And that's it for what we needed to do when the unit casts a spell. We are modifying its statistic depending on the cost of the spell. Now we just have to modify the statistic of the unit that receives the spell. So let's go inside the unit hit by spell function right here. And at the end, we can see that we were modifying the current health point of the unit when we receive the spell in the face. So here I'm just going to do the exact same thing, but for the other statistic also. So I'm just going to add myself a little sequence at the beginning, and I'm going to do the same thing for the movement point first. So if the spell was modifying the movement point of the current unit that receives it we're simply going to call the modify current mp function right here feeding it the modifier and then we're going to do the exact same thing but for the action point so if the spell is modifying the action point of the unit let's just modify it right away and now the statistics are updated on both units. We just have to add a little bit of feedback to the user so he knows that uh, we modified the movement point and action point, the same way we did for the health point. And that was inside the unspell animation its style because we want to time it with the animation itself. So right here, I'm just gonna zoom. Uh, this is where we remove the spell animation, doesn't matter. Afterwards, this is where we are spawning the animated number for the modifier HP, just if we were modifying the current HP of the unit. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is just at the beginning, I'm just going to spawn the animated number for the movement point and action point because inside the spawn animated number function we are already checking to see if the value we receive is not equal to zero so we can simply just call it right here and it should work no problem so so let's just connect our two function right here so let's start with the animated number for the modifier mp so spawn it with the color green and then we're going to spawn another animated number but for the color blue this time for the action point and that's it now the user should have some feedback that we just modified the unit's numbers and now there's just one last little thing we have to change in the unit before we can test all that and it is inside the set current mp function and actually uh, it's also the same thing inside the set current ap function right here because if we zoom at the beginning when we are setting the ap current we are uh, currently clamping the value between zero and the maximum because at the beginning i didn't want really the unit to be able to uh, go under zero action point and um, movement point and same thing i didn't want it to be able to go above of the maximum for both those variables but I actually changed my mind I think it will be better if we can actually go under zero and above the maximum that way it's going to give us uh, way more flexibility in our spells so we can modify the uh, action point and movement point of our units uh, the way we want so I'm just going to delete the clamp right here and just replace it by the, re the value we receive as input so get the AP it should be at the bottom. Here we go, get AP right here. So we are directly feeding the value we receive as input, even if it's super big or super small, perfect. So now let's go do the same thing in the movement point. So let's go in the set current MP function. We're gonna delete the clamp the same way we did for the action point and search for get MP this time. And it's also going to be at the bottom. So get MP right here, here we go. And it's now time to go test all that. So let's go in the game and see how it looks. So here I just started a combat with all my four units that have a different spell that are consuming different resources than action points and we're gonna test them. So I'm just gonna move my priest right here to cast my wave, my dark wave spell. This spell should consume health point on my priest when it does damage to the other unit. So here we go. We can see that now the priest lost some HP. So we can set it worked, but I can also reheal my priest afterwards and it seemed to work perfectly. So that's good. And then if I end my turn, I can go to my slime which uh, now has the possibility to reduce the movement point of my unit so I'm just gonna go uh, right here move my slime right here and I'm gonna try to cast my spell right here in the middle we can see right now uh, my priest has uh, four movement point uh, and after receiving the spell it should have less than that so let's cast the spell to see how it looks uh, okay so now we can see that uh, both units lost uh, two movement point so it seemed to work and then if I cast it again here we go oh okay my chicken 
died, that's not good because I wanted to test something, but whatever. Uh, we can see now that the priest uh, only has one movement point. So we can say it worked, it worked fine. My priest now has less movement point than before, so that's good. Then if I go to my bat, because my chicken died, uh, we're gonna come back for it later. Uh, now I can uh, cast this spell, which should uh, reduce the action point of the other units and also reduce one movement point on my bat. So now my bat has two movement points, and if I try to cast the spell, uh, we can see that uh, now it lost uh, one movement point and both the other units lost one action point. And now the bat is only able to move one other spot. I'm just going to end the combat because I want to have access to my chicken and start again. Now I'm gonna go to my chicken directly. Here we go. So now these are all the tiles that the chicken can reach right now, but uh, the chicken has a spell which is uh, able to give him more movement points. So let's try it. I'm gonna give him uh, more movement point, more movement point. And we can see now that the chicken can go all the way to the end of the grid right here. And then it should not have any movement point anymore because it used uh, all of them, but I can continue casting the spell to give him way more movement point and come back. So now the chicken is able to move uh, everywhere on the grid if he wants to. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so it seems to work. And there's one last little thing I wanted to test, and it is with the bat right here. I have a spell that consumes a movement point, so I should not be able to cast it if I don't have enough movement point to do it. So let's move it uh, one tile. Okay, I still have enough movement point. Move it again. I still have enough movement point. And now if I move one more time, here we go. Now I cannot cast the spell because I don't have enough movement point to do it. So that makes sense. It seems to work. Everything works as expected. There's just a little few things I want to improve before ending the video. And the first one is when we are casting a spell, uh, both numbers are appearing on top of each other so the health cost or the and the action point cost and things like that they are both appearing on top of each other so right here it lost movement point but we don't see it because it also lost the health point and that was on top of the other so it's not really clear so i'm just going to offset those numbers depending on the color and there's also if i end the combat right here i can go in my spell tab i've noticed a little bug if i select and cast a spell i'm gonna select let's say the bat which has a spell that consume a movement point now if I try to cast it, uh, we can see that, oops, I clicked on the wrong button. If I try to cast it, we can see that it resets the action point used uh, when casting the spell, but it doesn't reset the movement point, it doesn't reset the movement point, doesn't reset the movement point, only consumes them. And now the bat is not able to cast the spell anymore because it doesn't have any movement point left. So we're just going to reset the movement point also when we are casting a spell using the debug menu. So let's go do those two things. So let's stop and do them. And we're gonna start with the simplest one, which is to reset the movement point. So that's gonna be inside the player action in combat setup the action cast spell which is the action we use in the debug menu and right here we are resetting the action point i'm just going to also reset the movement point and that's it that should fix this issue so now we can just close that one and now we just have to improve the user interface a little bit and to do that, it's going to be inside the animated number widget. So in units, uh, widget uh, open the W underscore animated number. And this is our number. So let's flip the animation to see how it looks. So right now we are spawning the number and it goes up in the air in the middle. Good. Uh, but what we want to do is just translate this uh, component on the left or on the right, depending on the color we want to assign to it. But right now the animation is modifying the translation of the component. So we can't really override it. So if I go on the right right here and I try to change the translation, we can see that if we play the animation, it's going to revert back to the middle of the uh, viewport because that's how the animation works. So uh, instead of modifying this component directly, we're going to modify the overlay instead. We're going to take the translation of the overlay. We're going to, let's say, move it to the left a little bit. And now we can still play the animation and it should work uh, properly and same thing on the right. So let's just reset the translation of the overlay for now. I'm just going to make it is variable because we want to modify it in the blueprint depending on the color we receive as input and that's exactly the next step so let's go in the graph and now that the overlay is a variable we can take it on the left right here and we're gonna translate it either on the left or on the right right before playing the animation right here so let's just do a set the translation right here set translation i'm just going to connect it like that before playing the animation and for the value of the translation i'm just gonna do a select because it's going to be based on the color we receive as input so let's grab the color connect it inside the select just like that for the red i want it to be centered because it's the health point i think it's pretty important to keep it in the middle then for the green i'm going to move it on the left a little bit so let's say minus 30 so the green value is going to be on the left and the blue value is going to be on the right so the action point are going to be on the right of the health point perfect so now if we compile and save we should be able to go back in the game and see and the numbers should not be on top of each other anymore
So now I have my chicken priest bat again. I'm gonna try to cast the spell for the chicken. So we can see, yeah, on the left we have the movement point and on the right we have the action point. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna end my turn and see what happens if I try to uh, cast the other spell. So here it is. Here we go. It seemed to work. Uh, the health points are in the middle and the other values are on both sides. Perfect. So that's pretty nice. It seems to work perfect perfectly. So that's pretty good. Good. And now if I end my combat, we can see that the number should reset. Here we go. And it's pretty nice. Good. And now, since the video is pretty short, uh, I think it would be good to take a bit of time to fix a pretty important bug. Right now, in the game, if the unit kills itself uh, during its turn, it breaks everything. The game doesn't support it at all, and that's pretty weird. Uh, if I go back in my data table right here, I just changed my run chicken run spell to apply 50 damage to the unit, so we can see the result. And now I'm gonna go back in the game and try to cast my run chicken run spell. Uh, let's cast it. Okay, the chicken dies, that's good. And now my log is uh, pretty pretty red. I mean, it's just red. Uh, that's not good. And now the chicken is dead. Okay, I'm not able to move or do anything. It's still it's still the chicken's turn, even though it's dead. So that's not good. I can end my turn. Okay, that seems fine. Once we end the turn, everything seems to be back to normal. That's good. And now we are skipping the turn uh, normally. So that's good. And I think that if I end the combat, it's pretty good too. Yeah, it resets and that's pretty fine. But uh, we still don't want to have all that red stuff when uh, the unit kills itself. And even if I stop right now, it should, yeah, and the message like appears and I have a bunch of errors. And that's just because in the code right now, it assumes that the unit cannot kill itself. And that's not the right assumption because it's possible that the spell killed itself. So uh, I'm just going to close the log and we're going to go fix that before ending the video. And that's going to be inside the combat system. So let's open it. And actually that's not too far from here because we are already in the right function. So in the cast spell function, I'm just going to go on the right, right here. This is where we are attacking all the indexes. And once we're done attacking all the indexes, we're just going to check, okay, did you kill yourself? So I'm just going to do that right here. Once we're done attacking all the indexes, we're going to check if the current unit is still alive. If it's not alive, well, we just end the turn because the unit died. It's not going to cast another spell anymore. It's not going to move on the grid. It's not going to do anything. It's dead. So let's just end the turn right here. Here we go and that should fix the problem. So let's try to kill a chicken and see how it looks. So here we go, my chicken died. Okay, there's way too many numbers above the head. I'm just gonna skip the turn for this one and then I'm gonna kill uh, that one. Yeah, okay, uh, the action point and movement point seems to reset when we kill ourselves. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Okay, let's just stop this and I'm gonna go in the BP unit right here in the function uh, on combat turn ended. So it turn ended right here. Uh, we are resetting the movement point and action point uh, once the turn ends, but we're only going to do that if the unit is still alive. Uh, if the unit died during its turn, we're not going to reset everything. So I'm just going to check here if the unit is alive. So is alive. Here we go. Now that should fix uh, the issue. Perfect. Let's go back in the game and see how it looks. Here we go. So that should be way better. Yeah, it is good. So uh, now we have a different spell that can modify different statistics of our units. So that's pretty good. And it's now possible to kill ourselves and without breaking the game. So great. I guess that's going to be it for today's video. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.